Gaza has massively exposed the hypocrisies at the heart of the BBC. There were times where CNN was happy to push hard, but on balance, it's very clear where we lie, regrettably, and it's not entirely with the truth. Media-media besar barat yang pro-Israel seperti CNN di Amerika dan BBC di Inggris dipermalukan oleh sebuah video investigasi Al Jazeera yakni media Qatar yang beberapa hari lalu mewawancarai beberapa mantan jurnalis media barat tersebut yang membongkar kejahatan paling rahasia yang dilakukan oleh media-media besar barat dalam mendukung kejahatan Israel. We have spoken with more than a dozen journalists who have been covering the Gaza genocide for the Western world's leading agenda-setting outlets, including the BBC in the UK and CNN in the US. Both describe a repeated failure to report the truth on this story. Prior to October 7th, I hand on heart believed that CNN went to great, great lengths to report the truth and exclusively the truth. But after October 7th, the ease with which I saw news lines that supported the Israeli narrative come out really shook me. There were times where CNN was happy to push hard, but on balance, it's very clear where we lie, regrettably, and it's not entirely with the truth. Gaza has massively exposed the hypocrisies at the heart of the BBC. The fact that it very much does respond to influence, it very much can be swayed. It does follow the government line broadly on certain stories. The BBC is meant to be a public service. It's meant to be for the people. But at the end of the day, its purse strings are held by the government. And that you can see in the coverage. What happened on October 7th included acts that were bad enough in and of themselves. But if you want to create a context for dehumanization and genocide, you need to go further. The Israeli Prime Minister spokesman just confirmed babies and toddlers were found with their heads decapitated. We saw false reports about beheaded babies, which never happened, about a systematic campaign of mass rape, which never happened, about babies being cut from the abdomen of their mothers, which never happened, and a whole series of other horrific uh, atrocities. These were deliberately concocted official stories that were being provided in particular to a Western audience in order to create an atmosphere in which the crimes that were to follow would go on. Israel wanted to begin a campaign to start taking out all of these medical facilities. <coughs> In part, they were concerned that Hamas combatants were going to be treated in them, but also this was part of a war of annihilation to try to force the Palestinians in Gaza into a constant state of motion, moving, moving, moving from one place to another. Nowhere is safe for you, not even a hospital. A home, a school, a hospital that hosts terrorists is not a home, is not a school, and is not a hospital. It's a terror base. The Israelis were pumping the public with information that was meant to convince people that hospitals were not really hospitals. Hamas was using the patients in that hospital as a human shield. And this was a narrative that we saw unfolding almost from the beginning. It was overwhelmingly guests on the Palestinian side of things who were being looked into. Palestinians being flagged up for using the word Zionist, which isn't something to flag necessarily. Even the occasional NGO was thrown in, for example, Human Rights Watch. These are organizations that we've really relied on in terms of covering Ukraine and various other conflicts. And now and again, they would check an Israeli guest. But there was no balance in what was going on. Israeli spokespeople who we did have on were given a lot of free reign to say whatever they wanted with very little pushback. Babies were set on fire. Babies were shot in the head. Whereas any Palestinian guest was asked to condemn Hamas. But I want to ask you specifically about Hamas's actions today. Um, do you support them? Almost as though condemning Hamas was the sort of price to pay before they could be humanized in our coverage. Many of our own presenters when faced with an interviewee who was Palestinian or who had lost family in Gaza, there was just such a lack of compassion. I'm sorry for your own personal loss. I mean, can I just be clear though, you cannot condone the killing of civilians 
in Israel, can you? As a result, a number of producers were really reticent about putting a vulnerable Palestinian guest in front of a BBC presenter. The mounting double standards have provoked a backlash in the newsrooms of many Western outlets. Journalists at the New York Times and the BBC have resigned publicly, citing their consciences. Others have tried to change things from the inside. BBC staff have repeatedly complained to the network's director general. One email we obtained, signed in February by more than 20 journalists, warned the corporation's coverage risked aiding and abetting genocide. Staff at the Times leaked details of an internal rebellion over a now notorious report that claimed Hamas weaponized sexual violence on October 7th, an allegation that was exposed as baseless. Seventy journalism professors have demanded the Times do an investigation into that report. The Times did conduct an investigation, not into its story, but to find the source of the leak. Numerous journalists we have spoken to described variations of the same theme. Interference from executives and editors, the kind they have never faced on any other story. There's a divide between the many good journalists within CNN who jump through so many hoops to tell the true story and push back from high-level management demanding that you tone down criticisms of Israel. There was a period of time when we couldn't call airstrikes in Gaza airstrikes unless we had confirmation from the Israelis. A massive explosion at the largest refugee camp in Gaza. Joining us now is Lieutenant Colonel Richard Heck. It's really depressing because we would not be doing this in any other place. We would not tolerate the need to ask, say, the Russians whether they bombed a hospital in Kiev. So the double standards are really shocking. You try and change managers' minds, you feel like you're making progress, and then something happens, and you feel like you're back at square one. For example, more recently, on the day that 40,000 Palestinian deaths were announced, Mike McCarthy, who's number three in the organization, said in the morning editorial call that we need to contextualize and hold Hamas accountable. And that was reflected in the framing from the shows. The Gaza Health Ministry says more than 40,000 Palestinians have been killed since the October 7th Hamas massacre in Israel that triggered the war. Multiple journalists in emails, in meetings, have raised concerns about a lot of the things I've said in this interview. The disparity in the language used, the inconsistency in approach compared to other story areas like Russia and Ukraine, the lack of humanization when it comes to Palestinians, the lack of context about this conflict before the 7th of October. And it hasn't really made a difference because there's just a sort of unwillingness among the executive to accept evidence. For me personally, it meant I could no longer see my future at the BBC. Sahabat aswaja, pengakuan para jurnalis dalam investigasi Al Jazeera tersebut membuktikan bahwa kejahatan Israel didukung penuh oleh media-media barat dalam membuat propaganda yang menunjukkan seolah-olah Israel adalah korbannya. Lalu, bagaimana menurut kalian? Apakah sebagian besar media-media barat masih akan terus mendukung kejahatan Israel? Coba berikan tanggapan kalian. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.